Ladies and gentlemen, let's go racing here at Knoxville. Only the best go three of It is showtime at Williams Grove Speedway. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here at Eldora Speedway, it's showtime. You got a horror Often imitated, never duplicated, the greatest show on dirt, the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Time to sit back, relax, and enjoy, because ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime! Set to do battle for 30 laps, the green flag is waving! Hello again, it is Wing Nation talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week, and we are so glad that you have joined us. Aaron Evernham and Steve Post back at it here in the MRN studios, and uh, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I am fantastic. I'm doing good. I'm ready to get going here. Yeah, yeah. It feels yeah. good to be back. It does feel good to be back talking sprint car racing. Of course, there's been a lot of talk all off season about who's on first and who's on second. We'll talk a little <laughs> bit about that. Um, I think we're finding out, maybe even finding out some who are on third. Um, but um, but fun, fun stuff. Did you have a nice uh, downtime, holiday season, everything kind of nice in the Everham household? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure it was downtime. You know, we moved into our new house between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Nice. So that's a great time that's to move. That's a great time to do that. I'm um, thankful that it's finally done and, and, and we're here. So, yeah. yeah, all is well. How about you? Fantastic stuff here. Everything was great in my world. Just kind of um, uh, I over the holidays, over the Christmas to New Year holiday, um, I did something that I, I generally like to do. I got myself good and bored. Um, <laughs> my daughter, my youngest daughter goes to college. She was home. My oldest daughter's here. Um, she's on the way to, to another year or so, probably living in India for a time period. So wow. we're kind of at that stage where it's like, how many more of these uh, yep. long extended periods of time are we going to have the three of us together? And it was spectacular. But I remember, like I did, um, January 1st, I always cook a lot of meat. I call it meat a palooza kick off the year, cook a uh, smoker was out and everything like that. And January 2nd, the way the holiday fell, that was an off day. Yeah. And I kind of sat there and I'm like, okay, I'm uh, bored. Yeah. I'm bored now. I'm officially bored. And so did indoor racing, did Allentown. Man, we had a big show up at Atlantic City yeah. this weekend. Huge oh, yeah. crowd, huge, I mean, just raucous time. And off to the Coliseum this week to get NASCAR That's started crazy. off. Well, I think it's good to be good and bored because that means yeah. that your your body's you're refreshed. Right. You're refreshed, you're there. yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah. I mean, I feel fantastic. I really do. Yeah. So um, everything is good. Everything is great, as a matter of fact. Let's get to it. Our Hefner Racing Product Hot Topics. And we just alluded to it. The 2023 season, um, the addition of high limits has caused all kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. um, we're getting most of the answers. Um, most, if not all, the top drivers are back. One that was not committed is David Gravel, but the World of Outlaws announced this morning that there's a Zoom call tomorrow with David Gravel, and why in the wide world of sports would the World of Outlaws be promoting a Zoom call if it's not David Gravel yes. uh, coming on board there? So most are coming back with the World of Outlaws and a big addition with Geo Selsey yeah. coming on board. So I think that's going to be great to see. That team had been on the World of Outlaw Tour with Ian Madsen in the yeah. past, and then they've gone to a true outlaw schedule, and now they're going back World of Outlaw. Yeah, season. you know, I kind of like how it's all played out. I was nervous, skeptical, like we all were, to see where things fell. But, you know, I, th I think maybe there is a place for the high limits. Like, maybe maybe this all works out for the best for sprint car racing. We've talked and done a little comparison with the late model world. Yep. The late model world, and the late model world's different. But there was a, a graphic today. In the on, on one of the late model sites, okay? Now, you have the two tours. You have the Lucas Oil Late Model Tour and the World of Outlaw yeah. Late Model Tour. But you also have the Flow Night in America and the XR Series, which that's where it was getting all convoluted. Yeah. If you want to, you, you would have to choose Lucas Oil or World yeah. of Outlaws, but you could run either of those tours plus XR plus Flow Racing with no conflicts. So they've settled in in the late model world to a good balance spot. Yeah. And and fingers crossed, that's where we end up with the yeah. sprint car world as well. And uh, and, in, and in complete honesty, um, you know, complete honesty, there was a lot. Uh, you know, there it, it's easy to bust on the world of outlaws, and it's easy to bust on NASCAR. It's easy to bust on yeah. the sanctioning body. But when you look at the world of outlaw schedule, the fact that they're not going to California in March, they're going to Pennsylvania in yeah. March. I know the California fans and teams are not happy about it. That was a reaction to the request from the team owners. Yeah. That was that was a gesture that the World of Outlaws did to the team owners. There's some more money in the point funds, I believe that is. There's some yeah. wiggle room on the exclusivity. And so I think we've landed at a spot, at least for 2023, where it's going to be fun to see. 
Let's hope. Let's hope. Absolutely. <laughs> High Limit Series, um, 12 races, kicks off March 21st at uh, Tulare. Uh, the first big race is, uh, the first points paying race is 50,000 to win at Lakeside on April 11th. And then, and, and I love this because Trackhouse Racing and Shane Stewart are promoting this race. Yeah. So, need to see that. Uh, good stuff. So I think it's going to be a fascinating year, that's for sure. So we'll see. Stay tuned. Uh, we'll have it all covered here on Winged Nation. Uh, one of the big events, the Knoxville Nationals of Australia was this past weekend. The Grand Annual Classic uh, was Sunday morning mm -hmm. uh, when it played off here. And a local racer by the name of Brock Hallett wheeled it off into turn number three, running in second place with Sheldon Hodgenshield leading. Sheldon had a little bit of a bobble down there in three. Brooke gassed it up, came right around, and took it off from yeah. Sheldon for the win. $50,000. Man, that was pretty awesome. Big day for him. Big day for him, that's for sure. Um, he, had, he had had a solid, I was looking at his results. He's a 27-year-old local racer there. He was solid uh, during the uh, summer season down in Australia. Had a lot of top tens, a couple of top fives, but um, he picked the right time to shine, that's for yeah. sure, when the big uh, money was I'd on the line. So neat stuff. And then also neat stuff this past weekend, and I love that this, I love the way this played out, and I don't know how this came about, um, but USCS had a weekend at Volusia, which yeah. I, I think, and I don't know if it was a matter of, remember last year, the surface was such a big concern at Volusia, yeah. and I wonder if they didn't want to schedule, they had a late, they had a World Get of Outlaw weekend going. there, and then this USCS, and I wonder if they didn't say, hey, maybe we could schedule some USCS races here just to make sure the surface is good. Mm -hmm. However, we got there, and then the fact that Dirt Vision covered it, which, yeah. you know, we love Pete Walton's deal, the USCS, yeah. they're, our guy, they're our local guys here. Um, it was the germ-free Southern Sprint Car showdown, or shootout, USCS, uh, their season opener, uh, Friday night, 39 cars, uh, 17 states, Canada, and, and Great Britain represented. Yeah. Um, 25 lap feature, not a shocker when Ryan Timms pulls into the pit area. Mm -hmm. A lot of times he takes the trophy. Ryan Timms, Dylan Westbrook, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Saturday night, they lost a couple cars down to 37, 30 lap feature. Tyler Clem picked up his career largest win, $5,000. He took it over Davey Frenick and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. So a couple of good runs for Stenhouse, a couple of good young winners there with Clem and Tim's, and uh, we are off and running. Here we uh, go. With it. Here we go. Yep. Exactly. So, um, and we are going to talk to Tyler Clem. Now, the heat is on Tyler Clem because it's the first Wing Nation interview of the year, so the pressure's <laughs> all on the young man. All the way to the Wing Nation world is on his what shoulders. What happens when you win the big one. It's what happens when you win the big one. You get, yep. you get put right in the spotlight. So we're going to talk to Tyler. And the other off-news or off-season big story, of course, was the Chili Bowl. And it was just neat to see Kevin Swindell, Swindell Speed Labs, Logan CV driving the car. Kevin got his fifth golden driller, four yeah. as a driver and one as an owner. It was, it was special. It really was. Um, we're going to talk to Kevin. Uh, we're going to talk to him about that. Um, you know, we're a few weeks removed from it. Just what the, you know, now that yep. they've thought about it a little bit. But but he also fields a sprint car team. Yep. And he, I, I, I'm I'm curious. There's just a couple things he alluded to in some Victory Lane interviews about the sprint car team with the midget program. Mm -hmm. I'm just really curious. And Kevin is one of those guys that just fascinates me. Yeah. He's a thinker. And he's not very afraid methodical. to offer. Very yeah. methodical. Uh, I don't know where he got that from. <laughs> um, he's just a thinker. Mm -hmm. And he's not afraid to sayer. You know, yeah. all of that. So, uh, Kevin Swindell and Tyler Clem, our guests here on Wing Nation. Hefner Racing Products, they know sprint car racing, and they fair, uh, therefore they know what's best for your team. No other, uh, when we're talking about trailer and shop accessories, no other accessories can match quality performance and design. Top trailer builders use HRP trailer accessories to outfit their stock and custom-built units. Yep, and they're always adding, like, new cordless Cool charging stations, they're sleek in design and hold two cordless drills, impacts or flashlights, and battery chargers. It keeps clutter from your workbench. Roster includes something for every racer, team, trailer, and shop. So don't settle for anything less than Sprint Car Racing's number one accessories manufacturer www.hrpracing.com. HRP Racing. Got to hang with those guys at PRI. I love those. <laughs> our buddy folks. Jeff. Oh, our buddy Jeff. And 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 just everybody, uh, the the um, the the family the the they've got daughters now that are moving into some of the social media roles. The Hefner wow. family. I mean, it's just fantastic. I love those people to death, and we're glad they're back with our hot topics. And we are glad that we are kicking it off. When we come back, 
with young Tyler Clem. He's our first guest this year on Wing Nation. Sage Fruit is a premium grower, packer, and shipper of Washington tree fruit. Apples, pears, and cherries, and it's always an exceptional eating experience, and they're grown in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. Not only is their produce healthy, but they are grown with such care and precision that you can count on each piece of fruit having exceptional flavor. High quality fruit, exceptional flavor, healthy snacking. Make sure when you go to your local grocery store, ask for Sage Fruit. Sage Fruit, it's our first choice for quick and easy snacking. Hey, hey, this is Steve Post in the Wing Nation Concord studio. Ashley Strummy is in our Lethal Chassis Pennsylvania studio. We've got a new time for Wing Nation on MAV TV, 1230 Eastern Time on Friday afternoon. That's 1230 Eastern Time on Friday afternoon. And Ashley, this week's show, we talk to one of the best in the sprint car world. That's right, you won't want to miss it. It is the Myerstown Missile, Brent Marks, the most earned winningest driver monetarily <laughs> this year, talking about the 2023 season coming up. Steve, it's going to be an awesome show. It really is going to be an awesome show, that's for sure. 12.30 Eastern Time on Mav TV. Remember, write it down, set the VCR, the DVR, whatever you need to set, 12.30 Eastern Time on Mav TV. Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit. Wing, well, that's weird. With that promo with me there doing the <laughs> promo and talking and everything like that, I, I do want to mention this. Uh, we, we have two programs a week, okay? We have this one that Aaron and I do. It's live Tuesday, and, of course, it's on demand all week long. Uh, but we also have the Mav TV program, and uh, we have a new time slot for that. 12.30 um, Eastern time is our time slot for that. Uh, I had a great visit yesterday with Brent Marks, and it is exciting. It really, truly is. So, Fun, fun stuff in the world. And, of course, Brent, what a year he put together. Whew. And, um, you know, he's, he's all jacked up. He's all jacked up about getting back after it this year. And uh, he's um, it's fascinating. You just need to check that out this weekend on our Mav TV interview with him. And uh, we'll go from there. We're uh, working to dial up Tyler Clem. We're uh, shipped ashore to St. Petersburg, Florida. Uh, so momentarily we'll have him. But uh, I just think it's um, I, I think it was really a neat situation. Uh, we talked about USCS um, and, and how, you know, Pete Walton, and he's a character, and he's got a great group of racers when you look at, like, the Terry Grays and the Morgan Turpins and the Danny Smith. And uh, I just love that they... Got some some dirt vision love, yeah. Uh, so that everyone could tune in, and 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 I hope that you know maybe well, and the, the car count, the early season. Yeah, I mean, in that field of cars, and you're getting people like yeah, you know, Stenhouse was there, and Gavin Bushell, right, Ryan Tims, right. like you had a good yeah. stout I talked, field. I talked to Ricky. Well, I mean, I know we're still trying to trying to reach up and get Tyler here. I talked to Ricky. Um, Ricky's original plan this year um, was he was going to run the high limit series. And the 410, mm-hmm. and then some 360 races. Um, there, but he was going to use uh, from the from Sheldon's stock of motors. Yep. He was going to use one of their motors in the 410 program. Um, they're not quite inventory wise where they want to be just at this point for him to commit to too much. But him and his dad, and his, he, was, he was telling me this was back about two weeks before Volusia, and he dialed up his dad. And, and I love how Ricky Stenhouse, Big Rick and Ricky yeah. Jr. go racing yeah, because it is a true father-son thing. I mean, it is it is dad and son going yeah. racing. Son's a Cup Series winner and funds the operation and does all of that. So it's kind of an invert from how they started. It's an invert how they started. Uh, but I love that Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And he's going to get a chance to race some along the way. Oh, but he nice. called up his dad. He called up his dad and said, Dad, we can go to Volusia in a couple of weeks. And it didn't take Rick Sr. long to get things buttoned up and ready to go. And they went down there and they had two third-place finishes – We talked about this just a little bit ago. Leading it off here for Wing Nation is a guy that bested Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and a whole host of others. He joins us right now on the Sage Fruit Hotline. Tyler Clem joins us. Hello, Tyler. How are you? Good. How are you guys? We are fantastic, Tyler. I don't mean to put any pressure on you. I don't mean (laughs) to put any heat on you. But 2023 Wing Nation, you are the very first interview that we have. So the pressure is on, my man. The pressure is on. Um, you better be as good in the interview as you were on Saturday night. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. How about that? <laughs> Throwing it right I'll out there. Yeah. You were good on Saturday night. Just kind of describe. I mean, you you let it fly to fly, but just kind of describe how that race played out for you, Tyler. Yeah. I mean, uh, obviously had a halfway decent qualifying run, uh, fourth in our group, which the invert put us on the pole, and just, uh, you know, had a, had a meet Anthony McMurray and Ricky there in the heat race just to uh, – 
you know, get us a good spot for the feature and that we had enough points to where we uh, got the invert for the feature, which put us on the pole. It's just, you know, it's just a big half mile and you need to uh, get out and clean air. You need to be able to uh, move around. And that's what we did. And just, uh, you know, I told, us, I told the guy in the interview on the other night, I said I was really impressed with, uh, with what Ryan did. And, uh, on Friday night, and just I uh, I didn't really know how much of a lead I had, but it, after the race, I figured out that I had a pretty size lead, just like Ryan did on Friday. So just uh, yeah, yeah, obviously the biggest win of my life so far, and just uh, you know I'm very excited because we you know we beat Hall of Famers and NASCAR drivers and some of the best guys in the country. So just uh, you know it's pretty awesome. Tyler, talk about the stout field that you won against. Talk about those restarts. You led flag to flag. But there were a number of restarts where you had to make sure you hit your marks and, and made some good decisions. What does that pressure feel like? Oh, it's it's like the worst feeling in the world when you <laughs> see those crosses come out with uh, yeah. a couple laps to go. Because uh, just as last week at East Bay, I kind of had the same deal. I was leading with two to go, and I got passed on the last lap. So, But, yeah, like I, uh, like I told the guy in the interview, I was like, I didn't really know what to do, whether just to hammer the top like, like I was or, or trying to protect and decide myself. myself. But... Uh, yeah, the first one you started was, it was better than the second one because I saw Davey just peek his nose a little bit and I was fine. But then the second one, he he almost had me and I just had to protect going to the three and protect the last the last lap. But uh, you know, I'm good buddies with Daniel Lasowski and I've already asked him what you know what could I done better there. You know, I wanna I wanna get better. So I've always uh, you know been asking him what I can do just to try to not put myself in that situation, and make it as scary as it was. Pretty good coach right there with yeah. Danny the dude Zasowski. He knows how to win some races, that is for sure. We're talking to Tyler Absolutely. Clem. Picked up the win in the German Free Southern Sprint showdown, uh, shootout down at Volusia. USCS kicking it off for the season. Tyler, um, and I don't I don't like to ever get into driver's business too much, but you race traditionally down there with the Top Gun and some other series and other races down there, and most times you're racing for $1,000 to win. Had to be nice to get a big check to kind of – get the bank account in pretty good shape as you as you, as you roll into the rest part of the season yeah that was that was huge you know um nothing against you know florida racing or anything like that but yeah like we don't we don't get big races we run for a thousand dollars every week and uh you know the only time we get big races is you know, ski week so just uh yeah it definitely helps you know everybody knows how much racing costs nowadays everything you know prices of everything keep going up so just uh yeah, the five five thousand was really nice because obviously that's the biggest you know, biggest race I've ever won. So obviously good for the team because you know we're just, you know, we're just a little local team, team here in Florida, 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 but I feel like you know, you know we obviously, obviously can, can compete at the national, national, national or regional level, level, level like just like show the other night. night and just you know some money, money will go a long way with trying to be able to do that. Absolutely. Tyler, when I was doing a little research before our interview today, I was going through your Facebook racing page and I saw, I mean, you, you drive every type of car. I saw a late model. I saw a Crown Victoria. I saw all sorts of things. How did we end up in a sprint car and what is your, what, where's your background? How'd you get started? Um, I started racing uh, about four years old in Corey Midget. Um, I did that until I was nine years old and uh, I got started in late models and modifieds uh, for a couple of years and then I, uh, I progressed into a sprint car and just I've been I've been mounting out all three cars throughout my, my whole life now. I'm, now. I'm, I'm 20, 20 years old, so I've been, I've been, I've been doing, doing this for, for a long time. Long time. You know, it's crazy, you know, crazy I've seen, seen, but, uh, but uh, you know, I've been, I've been with the same exact car owners, owners uh, with my sprint, sprint side side since I started when I was nine years old. So you know they do a lot for me, and I'm I'm very lucky to be able to do what I do because not a lot not a lot of people that. You know, you know, drive through different cars. No doubt, that diversity really does help. You mentioned Florida, and for the next month, we're all going to be focused on Florida. But for the other 11 months of the season, you're kind of out there on your own. What are some of the challenges as a as a sprint car driver, as a racer? You know, being down there, uh, being down there, kind of, kind of way down in the in the uh, southeast corner of the country, and not really close to racing, and not really close to sprint car racing, other than some regional stuff you have down there. What are some of the challenges that brings to you? Um, it's it's just a whole different deal because our uh, our local series it, it's not a 360. It's like it's like a limited. Women motor, 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 motor with, you know, different, different rules, rules and, you know, you know steel heads, heads and, and that. So you can so only, only run the motor, motor down, down here. here. So if you, you want to go race somewhere else, else, you got to put a 360 in or a 305 or something to travel a little bit more. So it's, you know, a whole different deal 
the way anybody, anybody has ever seen in Florida, Florida because it's, uh, you know, like I said, unique. You can't carry it anywhere else with the motor that we have out here. So um, it's, it's unfortunate that it has to be that way because I think it's just, you know, all should be 360 or 305 or something to make it easier for just like people up north to come down for speed weeks or something like that. It would be easier for everybody. Tyler, you talked about being able to compete at the national level. What is the, uh, well, maybe what are the plans for this year, but what are the long-term goals? Is that the goal is to stick with sprint cars and race at the national level? Um, yeah, obviously the national level would be the, my dream, um, whether it is sprint cars or late like model or anything like that. I mean, the, my dream since I started racing was uh, to be on the outlaw tour, whether it's late models or sprint cars. But uh you know, I feel like our team is, is good enough to compete with those guys right now. But like I said, you know, the funding is not there. We just need we just need help to be able to get to that level. And, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, I get, you know, picked up by a team or we do this on our own or something, we just, uh, I feel like we have the capabilities to do it. We just need to get there. Mm-hmm. Scratching and clawing, that's for sure. Years ago, I was in Indianapolis. Uh, I went out around the parks, the the over in, um, you know, over uh, west of the city over there. It was around the parks. And we ran around Tony Stewart Racing, and your quarter midget operation was parked out there behind his, uh, behind his shop. You guys were camping up there. There was a big quarter midget race in town or something like that. And I see you drive the number 14C. Is that indeed a nod to Tony Stewart? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Tony's been a great friend of ours for uh as long as I can remember. He's uh basically my hero in racing and uh when he was twenty back in the day with the Gibbs for the NASCAR stuff, I was twenty as well. So um yeah, when he switched over to fourteen us, you know, when I became fourteen as well. So he's uh he's uh definitely my hero in, in racing and uh definitely been a good friend of mine for sure. I, I can imagine. I can imagine. This race was uh, the the only 410 race. Uh, well, there was one in Australia. Um, it was on Dirt Vision. Um, what have you have have people reached out to you? You probably picked a pretty good time to win your biggest one because I think there was a lot of eyeballs on you. Yeah, I. But the moment I got back to the city, I got my phone. I had like seventy notifications just from Facebook and, and everything. People texted me. I had you know my buddy like Tanner Force texted me. Uh, Bunch of bunch of race car drivers, bunch of people involved with racing, uh, holding me and congratulating me, which means everything to me because you know we don't, like I said, I'm a Florida. We don't really get the recognition, and uh, this is you know basically the only time that you know the eyes are on Florida for these couple of weeks, and it was uh, really cool to see everybody was watching, and uh, obviously yeah, I, uh, I, I wish I did something with those guys that texted me. That's great. Fantastic. Well, Tyler, uh, congratulations on the win. You've led off really well with Wing Nation. We're yeah. going to have a great year because we had a great first interview, and we wish you continued success. Thanks for joining us here on Wing Nation. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. You got it. There we go. Tyler Clem. How about that? Great, great young racer. Yeah. Great, great story. Um, he's uh, picked up some new sponsorship Ooh. along the way. You can go to his Facebook page and learn all about those people. Mm -hmm. He's also Instagram, and we ran out of time here, uh, but he's also kind of developing a little bit of a YouTube page, which I ah. love that as well. Yeah. So uh, Tyler Clem, follow him on social media, and you can learn more about that young racer. Stay with us. When we come back, Kevin Swindell joins us on the Sage Fruit Hotline. Dirt Empire Magazine is the ultimate dirt track racing only magazine in the world. Featuring interviews, opinions, event photos, tech, and 100% racing action. Each issue includes late models, modified sprint cars, and more. Big event photos from the best photographers in the sport. And great one-on-one -on -one interviews with the top drivers. Dirt Empire Magazine is the ultimate dirt track racing only magazine in the world. Featuring interviews. Hello. Dirt Empire Magazine is the ultimate dirt track racing only magazine in the world. Featuring interviews, opinions, event photos, tech, and 100% racing action. Each issue includes late models, modified sprint cars, and more. Big event photos from the best photographers in the sport. And great one-on-one -on -one interviews with the top drivers. Sage Fruit is a premium grower, packer, and shipper of Washington tree fruit. Apples, pears, and cherries, and it's always an exceptional eating experience, and they're grown in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. Not only is their produce healthy, but they are grown with such care and precision that you can count on each piece of fruit having exceptional flavor. High-quality fruit, exceptional flavor, healthy snacking. Make sure when you go to your local grocery store, ask for Sage Fruit. Sage Fruit, it's our first choice for quick and easy snacking.
Wing Nation continues on. Let's continue with uh, great wins in the month of January. How about that? Yeah. Uh, the Chili Bowl Nationals out at the uh, Expo, the Sage Expo Center in Tulsa. Uh, Logan Seavey was the driver of record, but the owner of record got his fifth golden driller in the Chili Bowl. Also picked up one in the Tulsa shootout earlier and joins us now from the corporate offices, wow. the towers, the suites, the complex <laughs> at Swindell Speed Labs. Kevin Swindell joins us. Hello, Kevin. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you guys? We are doing well. Kevin, it's been a few weeks. Um, have you had a chance to reflect and just kind of savor what you guys accomplished out at Tulsa? Yeah, it's been cool. Um, you know, it, it kind of seemed like it all went too well for it to be real <laughs> to some extent there. Um, you know, from, from building all this stuff and kind of having some struggles to get it get it all done and functioning and everything to um, – you know, Monday going really well, Friday obviously doing, you know, going well, and, and Saturday too. So, um, you know, nothing fell off, and, and we didn't look silly. So that was kind of the goal going in, and um, we came out way ahead of that. Yeah, I'd say. Kevin, you've been a, a team owner for quite a few years now, and you've won some big races. Probably uh, nothing as big as winning the Chili Bowl as an owner. But what is that like for you to watch as a car owner, you know, when you're, when you're driving, you're in the moment, you're, you're part of it. You you don't have time to think about it, but when you're a, an owner or you're someone, you know, is, is, is driving, it's a whole different ball game to watch. The nerves are definitely different. Describe the difference watching that chili bowl. Yeah, I think, you know, I explained this to somebody the other day, a little bit of like, um, you know, from this side of the fence, and, and doing the cruci side of it as well, it, it, it's a deal where you're kind of um, just trying not to screw it up for the guy in the seat, I feel like. And, and as being that guy in the seat that's, you know, had good cars and bad cars and, and been frustrated with that stuff and this and that. So uh, I think a lot of the time I'm, I'm just really relieved that I didn't, you know, do anything to to make a mess of, of what he can do and, you know, put Logan in a in a good spot to go out and do his job. So. Um, you know, a lot of time it's, it's once you get through the first so many laps and, and realize that, that you're going to be okay, then, then it just be kind of becomes, can we get this over with, you know, <laughs> especially when you're leading something like that. I can imagine the video of you over the last lap or two was fun watching you on the perch there that you were, that you had watching that as far as, as far as the race goes, Kevin, um, the chili bowl, the Swindells. Um, what, what is there about that race that just is, is, I mean, and I know it's success that you guys have had there, your dad has had there as well, but man, it just seems like, what, what is there about going out there to Tulsa that is so special to you? Yeah, I mean, it's, it goes back a long time, you know, to like, that was the biggest race I got to run every year as a kid. When, when we go to the shootout, you know, when it was go-karts and, you know, into the micros and stuff. So, um, you know, in some way that, that building has been a part of my life as long as I can remember. So, um, it's been cool to have a lot of success there. Um, uh, I had a lot of bad luck in, in the shootout days and, um, still did. And, and up until this year, you know, and, and having a good run with Gavin. So, um, yeah, it's just, I don't know what it is about that place that, you know, obviously Knoxville has been a, a sore spot for our family for all these years, but um, yeah. Tulsa has, has been a good one. So I, I don't know how that works or, or what, but, um, you know, at least we've we've got one of them. Yeah. And you certainly have it for sure in the family. Kevin, just uh, the week of the Chili Bowl, you rolled out your new Victory Fuel drink. Talk about where the idea came from and, and what a way to kick it off to, to put your car in Victory Lane. Yeah, no, that all worked out really well and, um, you know, kind of eased it in there at the shootout thinking that uh, hopefully people wouldn't think I had a dumb idea and, and, you know, not too many people would tell me they hated it and that all went well and, um, you know, we we kind of then pushed a little bit harder, obviously, at at Chili Bowl and had the car and everything full wrapped and and whatnot, so um, couldn't have been a better start for that and, um you know excited about that but as far as where it came from i just um i'd worked with somebody that that had been kind of in that business for a while actually helping out with some of the speed lab stuff when we were doing a little more on the ad side and some things like that and um just kind of 
had some ideas out loud one day and, and, you know, he kind of felt like he could make it happen. And, and we went and looked at the numbers to do it and, um, you know, it was reasonable and it was kind of something that, that I wanted for myself that, you know, I used to drink the Red Bulls and energy drink side of things a lot. And, um, once I got hurt, I just couldn't really do it anymore. And, and, you know, it either keep me up at night or, or mess with my body. It seemed like a little bit. So, um, you know, wanted something that wasn't water, but, you know, had some flavor and everything that, that you could kind of drink and then realized along the way too, that, that, you know, that was a spot that was missing for a lot of kids and stuff. So, um, kind of to, to put something good for you in a can that looks like it's, it's exciting and fun. And, you know, I see kids, like if you hand them a can, a lot of the times and they get that like pop when they open a can, it's just something different for them that makes them feel like it's cooler. So, um, yeah, it's going well so far and, and we'll see where it goes from here. Yeah. I saw something about Jordan was talking about learning how to ship, uh, ship that we can ship shirts and hats really well. We're learning, learning how to ship the, the, the drinks as well. Um, you did an interview post race uh, with Tyler Burnett, one of our friends over at Flow Racing, and you said something that that really sparked questions to me. You talk uh, there, there's two ways to go racing. One is a driver, a crew chief. You hook up and you just grind and you work and you get to know each other and you get to know each other. The other way is is what you alluded to is that with a 39 car, you've got drivers in and out of the car, different drivers. You work with Gavin up at Millbridge. You do all kinds of things. And you talked about how that variety might have helped you. Can you kind of go a little bit further into how the variety of drivers you've you've worked with over the last couple of years has has helped your program? Yeah, um, I think, you know, specifically it was a lot of, of Pittman and, um, you know, trying to get him comfortable in a, in a different way than what I've, you know, been able to do with, you know, what I feel like is a lot of young guys who um, they don't need some of these, a certain feel. They, they didn't, you know, spend 10 years, you know, with the cars acting a certain way and, and now they're different and, um you know, so we had to kind of chase some things and, you know, I think racing in Pennsylvania to open my eyes to having to figure out different ways to make the the car sit and, and do things. But, um, yeah, just like leaning on Darren, you know, those years of kind of like, what did you guys do when you went here and what did you do in there and, and went down some different roads to try to make him happy and found out how to, you know, get the cars to react. And then, you know, I think, now between the micros and doing some different stuff and then um you know like sanders really knew what he was talking about i I just feel like the last maybe you know two or three years i've had some more mature guys in that could really give me info as opposed to you know those first couple years with spencer where he was just still trying to figure out how to drive the car and i just did a lot of it off of you know sight and um you know we kind of had a package and if that package worked it worked and if it didn't, we just kind of beat it harder and hope that, that, you know, that fixed it. So, um, yeah, just, you kind of just spend some time with doing a lot of different things. And I think it opened my eyes to see how to, to get one to make grip in you know, two or three different ways and not be so stuck to, to one theory. And, um, I think it's easy to get stuck in a kind of rut of just doing the same thing over again. And, you know, if it's slicker, you just go more. And if it's, you know, not as slick, you go less kind of thing. And figuring out how to do it in completely different ways sometimes is, is what will really, I think, will get you uh, a lot further. And that's what, uh, you know, really, like practice day, we went down the route that I normally would with the stuff that we've done for years at Chili Bowl. And, you know, we didn't think we liked it as much as we did the way it was, you know, the first round. And so we just went further the opposite way of what we'd been doing. And, you know, I feel like if I hadn't kind of opened my eyes to some of this stuff the last few years, I probably wouldn't have been willing to, to do that. And, you know, luckily it worked out. That's some interesting insight into the, the crew chief role, and it all makes a lot of sense. Uh, Kevin, you had a partnership with Tim Bertrand or Bertrand Motorsports for the Chili Bowl. I actually grew up with Tim racing quarter midgets with his family. Um, what was that like to share some of the ownership and to give a, a family from New England a chance to be a part of such a big win? I know it meant the world to him and his family. What was that like for you? Yeah, it's good. Um, you know, we we wouldn't have made this happen without Tim and, um, you know, kind of, 
the idea was to, to maybe do a couple outdoor races last year, you know, in kind of preparation and, and, and that's kind of why, you know, we did what we did was to have a car to, to do both and, um, just never got the stuff at all in time to, to do anything else. But, um, yeah, he didn't, he didn't really flinch when, when I had the idea and, and wanted to be a part of it. And obviously he's, he's helped with the motors, uh, for the last few years. And, um, you know, that's a big part of this as well, but, um, yeah, it was, was cool. I, I think he was, he probably didn't really know what to expect going in and, um, you know, neither did we really, but, um, uh, it, it turned out to be really cool and, and was obviously really special for him. And, you know, I know they worked really hard to try to win some of these pavement races at IRP, um, you know, the last couple of years and have had trouble. So, um, you know, to really get him, get him something he could put on the mantle was really cool. Neat stuff, that's for sure. Kevin, before we cut you loose, uh, do you have uh, any plans that you could share with us with that sprint car, or are you still working on putting those all together? Yeah, I don't really know yet, to be honest. Um, we kind of getting through, you know, building two brand new micros and a midget kind of put me completely out of the loop on the sprint car side of things there for a couple of months and, and figured I'd get through Chili Bowl and, and I'd really look at it and then we had to come home and ship a million cases of victory and I'm chasing down ingredients and things like that to try to get more made faster than I thought I was going to have to. So, uh, I haven't really made a lot of plans yet. I mean, um, you know, Sanders is still in, in Australia, so I haven't really talked to him about stuff and, um, it's got to see the high limit still looks, looks good. And, um, we'll just kind of play it by ear. Uh, I think the, the hardest part was, you know, tires have gotten so much more expensive and diesel and everything else that it makes it harder to to get up and down the road. And I, last year was a lot more of a strain on the budget than the last few years. So just um, have to look at all the all of that and, you know, see what we can do and what we can make work. Fair, fair enough. Yep. That's for sure. Kevin, congratulations on the Chili Bowl win. Uh, it was really fun to watch, that's for sure. And we appreciate you joining us here on Wing Nation. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. There we go. Kevin Swindell joining us on the Sage Fruit Hotline. Stay with us. More Wing Nation in just a moment. Sage Fruit is a premium grower, packer, and shipper of Washington tree fruit. Apples, pears, and cherries, and it's always an exceptional eating experience, and they're grown in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. Not only is their produce healthy, but they are grown with such care and precision that you can count on each piece of fruit having exceptional flavor. High quality fruit, exceptional flavor, healthy snacking. Make sure when you go to your local grocery store, ask for Sage Fruit. Sage Fruit, it's our first choice for quick and easy snacking. Man, I'll tell you what, I love talking to Kevin Swindell. He's another one of those guys I think you can learn from, and, and that crew chief stuff is just fascinating yeah. to me. Yeah, and now you got the business side you're hearing from him. Like, he's definitely puts a lot yeah, of thought. He's chasing down yeah. ingredients. I Everybody's, laughed. Yeah, he's I smart laughed. about it. You he's, gotta like, yeah. love that. Man, I, I'll tell you what, it was so cool. <laughs> uh, just so cool. You know the passion that burns in his heart. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and just to see him win, uh, Jordan, you know, Amy was there. I mean, the yep. celebration. Um, even going back to the Tulsa shootout, I, they, I, I get to see a lot of him up at Millbridge with Gavin Bochelle and for yeah. Gavin to win the Tulsa shootout was just, I, I just, I, I, I love his heart. I love his passion for it. And, uh, and he's pretty good at that, 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 that crew chief stuff was pretty fun. Fascinating yeah. stuff. That's for sure. Um, I want to get to this. We're going to get to the spring car hall of fame. You mentioned Connecticut. You were on last week, the David Gravel yeah, YouTube page. That, I am telling you, first off, David Gravel's YouTube yeah, has been fantastic. Yeah, he's doing a fantastic. really good job with it. He's been doing a great job with that. I love theme shows. Yeah. And that theme of your Silver City uh, quarter midget track, you had Joey Logano on. You were you were you were under the weather the week yeah, before. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Because you were supposed to be on with Joey. So you have we you, have a first grader who gets the stomach bug. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. That brings it, it home to the family. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. But you. Um. But he had Joey on, and I thought Joey was fantastic yeah. talking about it and racing in general. And then you and Doug and everyone. Ryan I just Priest Ryan and, Priest exactly. Yeah. That was neat. It was really neat. It was it was kind of special too. I, one guest came on and called us the, like the Silver City Six because all six of us grew up at the same quarter midget track over different times. Yeah, I raced with Doug Kobe, uh, the most of the group, but uh, it it is neat and it's neat. I think what I really enjoyed about the show is everyone still has that like down to earth, genuine. I don't know if it's from the same upbringing or not, but it, yeah. it's it's neat to have that connection 
And we're all trying to put a little bit back into it to help the, the next generation. Good, good. I'm glad to hear that, too. A quarter midget racing, micro racing, yep. all of that stuff is so good, but it's so critical to what mm-hmm. we've got going on. And I, the quarter midget stuff, man, the stuff here at Salisbury, holy cow. I went out there last year one day. My gosh, there's more kids running quarter yeah. midgets. It's and then so we have Millbridge, like, see. think of it. We're get, we're yeah, with the, with the yeah. box stocks and everything else. It's the really future's neat. bright. future is bright, that's for sure. National Sprint Car Hall of Fame birthday calendar yesterday. He's returning to racing, I Dale Blaney. That. Isn't that awesome? We're going to dial Dale up here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I want to I want to find out what in the wide world of sports is going on with him. Um, coming up later this week, uh, Ira Hall, the, uh, we just mentioned, Tyler Clem mentioned, Danny Lasoski. his birthday is on Friday, uh, Ted Johnson, Mike Arthur, and tomorrow would have been the birthday of Ray Lee Goodwin, a 1999 inductee into the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame, 1964, 65, and 66, Kansas City Auto Racing Champion, six 66 and 67, Kansas Jayhawk Association of Topeka champion. He was rolling, and he carried that car down to Knoxville in 1969 and won the Nationals, or 68 and won the Nationals. Over 150 wins. He raced into the mid-70s until he had a couple of bad crashes. Uh, His final one, actually, was running for Speedy Bill um mm-hmm. at uh, knoxville and had some eye problems after the crash and uh, had to sit out uh lived a long life after that uh we lost him a couple years ago uh, september 11th 2021 at 81 years of age but ray lee goodwin enshrined in the sprint car hall of fame and museum and you can support the sprint car hall of fame and museum their big initiative right now is that corvette raffle a 2023 70th anniversary edition z06 corvette with uh to a Z07 performance package. They also put in some cash I on know, there, too. I know. I was just looking at that. $25,000. Wow. You can learn more at www.winaz06corvette.com or go to the Sprint Car Hall of Fame page. Lots and lots of stuff. The drawing will be on August 19th, the Knoxville Nationals. So uh, we are supposed to have 410 racing this weekend, but that got washed out down at Bubba Pollard's yep. Sanoa Raceway Park. I love that. Bubba Pollard. Of course, he is... Um, uh, in the short track, late model, super late model world, he's known as Redneck Jesus. Um, he is just a champion, a people's favorite. Yep. Uh, he's and he, I've talked to him a few times. He's just a good dude. Yeah. Uh, the family bought Sonoa Raceway, and so he went to. Um, he was down in Georgia, uh, whipped up on Corey Heim and William mm-hmm. Byron and Chase Elliott and all those guys. Won a big super late model race on Saturday night. Sunday, he was on the track or at the racetrack, getting ready That's for the All Stars. Unfortunately, Mother Nature had yeah. something to say, so the All-Stars have canceled. Um, but do, but don't be afraid, because Pete Walton has races scheduled this weekend <laughs> uh, at uh, Henry County Speedway. Uh, All-Stars, they'll kick off next Tuesday at Volusia World of Outlaws, season opener next Friday at Volusia. So here we go. Yep, sir. Woo! Man, oh man, it is good. Good stuff, that is for sure. Uh, you can follow along on our social media, Twitter, Facebook. We have uh, we have a Facebook group and a Facebook page. Uh, you can follow along on our YouTube channel as well. Great new Wing Nation gear. Sky has put together some stuff. You can see it at shopwingnation.com. That's shopwingnation.com or on the Tom Book, Jason, uh, Justin Peck Motorsports trailer. We mentioned this earlier on. Um, new time for our MAV TV show. This week, Brent Marks is our guest. New time. It is 1230 Eastern time on Friday. Set the DVR, the VCR, or whatever all you new young kids are using to record <laughs> things because you probably don't have a VCR or a DVR and probably don't even know what a VCR is. Say they probably don't know, know the VCRs. Set your recording <laughs> set device. Set your VCR. Yeah, set <laughs> your recording device for 12:30 Eastern time on <gasps> Mav TV. She's already busting me for being old. I and mean, out I of was. Touch. I'm in the era of VCRs too, but I just haven't you, heard it in a while. You just haven't heard it in a while. Where me, it's you just might part be able of, to get them at the antique shop. It's part of my life, exactly. <laughs> it's a way of life. Still, can't get the VCR to work. It ate the tape. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Cragger, my VCR ate my tape. What do I do? Help. He says, you don't use VCRs anymore. Yeah, That's what yeah. you do. So um, good stuff. Hey, we appreciate Tyler Clem and Kevin Swindell for joining us. More important than all of that, though, thank you for joining us here on Wing Nation.